Hello, my name is Akanksha and today I'm going to tell you basics of sale point identity IQ and the trailing plan that we are going to cover during this training. So uh, today we are going to talk about this product, which is sale point identity IQ. So sale point is the name of the company and identity IQ is the name of the product. So what it is about, what is sale point identity IQ? So this is an identity and access management platform. So what do you mean by that? So identity as in every user and what all access and identity has. So this is basically identity access provisioning and access governance platform. What is the business purpose of sale point identity IQ? So there are two mainly purposes of it. One is a business friendly access governance and another is business friendly access provisioning. So what do you mean by access governance? So let's say I am a new user and I have certain access. So this product will confirm and enforce that I have the least access across all applications. So I will have what is required and I will not have anything else. The second thing is modeling and enforcing IT policies. So every organization will have certain policies. So this product will make sure that all the IT policies are modeled and enforced on all the identities across the platform. The third is this tool can also be used for auditing purposes. So this will audit all the access that a user has. The another thing is enforcing compliance. So all these four topics come into business friendly access governance. Now, the second part I told you is access provisioning. So what is access provisioning? So let's say I have an access to certain applications. So my access needs to be provisioned to those applications. So that is uh, done by sale point. This can be automated or this can be manual. So if an application is connected, then it will be an automated provisioning. If it is not connected, then it will be a manual provisioning. So these topics will be covered in depth, in details, in the later on sections when we are going to talk about applications provisioning and the entire tool details. So now I'm just giving you an overview so that you would know what we are going to talk about and what this tool is about. So that is it. And the other thing is, uh, this tool can also be used for providing controls to the business. What do you mean by providing controls? Providing controls means this can even manage your passwords. This can even uh, uh, track your access change requests. And uh, overall, Identity IQ uh, delivers a wide variety of IAM processes. What all processes? So this uh, this can be uh, considered as automated access pro certifications, then policy management, access request and provisioning, password management, and identity intelligence. So these are all five modules of this tool, and all the modules will be covered in the later on sections. Now, uh, the other thing, other point, other good point about this tool is flexible connectivity model. So we can connect IQ to all the data center or cloud-based applications. I mean, like there are so many connectors available, more than 72, 73 connectors in the latest versions. So we can connect to almost all the popular applications available. So which is a very good point. Now we are going to talk about what all components are available in this tool. So one is a compliance manager and one is a lifecycle manager. I told you a little briefly about what is uh, governance and what is provisioning. So these two tools talk about this. This is all about governance. This is all about provisioning. Now, uh, it has various modules. One is a policy model, which comes into governance, like defining IT policies, and this is a role models. So role based access provisioning is also available in this. Now, identity warehouse, every user is considered as an identity or maybe a cube, you can call it. I will be talking into more details about it in the later on sections. Now there is workflow engines. So workflow engines can be used to create workflows and trigger workflows. So there is a very good uh, UI interface available to create and update workflows. Even you can uh, do it using an XMLs. And we are going to talk about it in detail 
in the workflow class. Now, uh, risk models, analytics. So these are all tools available in the sale point. I don't want to go into depth right now because it'll be way too much and uh, you can understand it better when we uh, when we go step by step and talk about all the topics. So next I'll be giving you an infographics demo. So that means I can show you what the tool looks like so that you'll have a basic uh, knowledge about how SailPoint is and how we can uh, use the application. So I did a local installation and this is a very blank interface. Why I did a fresh installation is because uh, as we go ahead in the training, we can go step by step. I can even show you how you can uh, proceed with all the practice, all the uh, materials that I share with you and then uh, you can do uh, the sessions along with me, so that will be more clear. So this is how the home page looks like in SailPoint. All right. So here you can see the company name is mentioned. And if you uh, deploy it for your client, then you can even customize this UI. You can do certain brandings over here. So the home page, we have these things. So this is called as quick links. And these things are called as widgets. So there are so many out of the box quick links and widgets available in SailPoint and you can even customize the dashboard using this edit button. So here if you see in the top corner there are three lines if you click that you have these controls. So what are these everything here is a quick link and you have a dashboard. This is my dashboard that I see it. Now we have two more dashboard compliance dashboard and life cycle dashboard. So compliance dashboard will talk about all your reviews, certifications and everything. Right now we don't have anything on here, but if you want to edit the dashboard, you can add all the review related things. You can see access review, completion status, all the access review controls available here. Then you have a life cycle dashboard. So wherein you have all the uh, access request and provisioning related information. Then you have tasks. What do you have in tasks? Task is like my task. What is pending on my side? So let's say I'm logged in right now as the administrator. So uh, as an administrator, I can access to all these things, but maybe if I log in using my own ID, so therein I don't have permission to all those things. Maybe I just have permission to access review. So I, I'll be only review. I'll be only reviewing the access that the user has. So I can only see this link then. So then I have manage user access. So using this manage user access, you can select a user, go ahead and uh, provide certain access to the users. So here you can see this is the link that is uh, provided by a uh, this is the UI that is provided by SailPoint. It is a very good enough UI when you implement uh, SailPoint for a particular prod for a particular company, then you will be having a lot of data, a lot of accesses and a lot of identities, maybe identities slash users, you can call them. And then you can um, request access you from this page. Then you have manage accounts, manage passwords and track my request. Then there is one more thing since this tool is identity and access management. So here in we all talked about access. Now we are going to talk about identity. What you can do with identity. You can create an identity. You can edit an identity and you can view an identity. And then we have so many things that you can do with uh, you can see all the identities in the identity warehouse. You can correlate them. You can uh, create a risk model. All those things um, you can do in this tool and that we will cover subsequently when the topic comes. So uh, this is the basic uh, overview about it. Also, there is one more very important control here, which is a global settings. So global settings is where you do all the configuration everything about the tool like identity IQ configuration when you log in what happens uh, how can we do the mappings every configuration and uh, system uh, i mean like setting up basically this system is coming in the global settings even you can see in the url the name they have given it is system setup so uh 
I think this is enough uh, for the two uh, tool infographics demo right now. And let's go back to our PPT. So what are the prerequisites? So let's say you want, I mean, like if you wanted to learn SailPoint, what is expected from you? So uh, you should know basic core Java or in SailPoint language, we call it as uh, bean shell. So uh, core Java is also very basic in this, which is me, which means that you should be familiar with uh, the classes, objects, and a little bit about uh, collections when you write the workflows. Collections come into play, but it is okay even if you don't know Core Java. I can share you some uh, video links wherein you can go through those videos and you can go through some tutorials and you can learn Core Java very quickly. And Bean Shell is a lightweight script language was which is made out of Java only so which is very similar to Java if you know core Java you'll know bean shell so there are uh, certain developer guides also available for bean shell which I'll be sharing with you guys and then um, the other thing is XML in sale point everything everything application identities uh, workflows everything is stored as an XML so you should know how to read and how to create an XML XML is a very uh, basic and uh, user friendly term that uh, you have and it is very easy to learn and there are so many websites available over the internet where you can learn basic XMLs. It is nothing but tags and even I would share you certain uh, links and uh, documents about XML so which would be uh, helpful to you to learn XML and then you should know basic X SQL. So if you wanted to create certain reports or uh, in SailPoint, you you have uh, their we have their own wrapper classes along. Up, I mean, like apart from SQL, but you should have a little knowledge about SQL and basic IAM knowledge. I won't say this is a prerequisite, but uh, if you have this, th it is really good. Even if you don't have, I will explain you each and every term that comes in sale point identity and access management too. Okay, so these are the prerequisite and then uh, what all we are going to cover in this session. So version, which version we are going to uh, cover. So right now the current version is 7.2. Even I have a 7.2 copy with me. So if you go here, and if you come to the home page, you can see version 7.2. So I will be telling you uh, the I will be teaching you on the latest version. So which would be helpful for you guys if you go on and give the uh, give certain uh, interviews wherein you are going to tell them that yes, you have worked on uh, the latest version, which is uh, very good and everyone desires the latest version. Even sale point comes in uh, all the versions starting from five, five, six, six, three, then seven, then seven, one, then seven, one, P3, certain patches. And now the latest is seven two patch three. So we are going to teach you on seven dot two basically. And then what are what all are the course contents? OK, uh, so I, I have uh, this course content to be covered in this training wherein we are going to talk about the first topic is system setup. I show remember I showed you the page of global settings wherein you have uh, all the configuration login configuration identity mappings account mapping. So this is a very important very very important and very basic uh, uh, topic that we want to cover and the next thing is lifecycle manager setup. So what life cycle identity life cycle like joiner movers leavers we are going to talk all about it in this topic and the next thing is configure applications so how do you configure application how do you create applications how do you onboard it how do you do provisioning what is the data source configuration native change detection everything will come into configure applications so this is also very very important because uh, when you uh, go and implement sale point so this is the first thing that you do so in order to manage those applications you need to configure those applications and the other thing is the defining home page quick links. So uh, when you do certain customizations, quick link comes into play. So we are going to talk about everything here and then activity settings.
so what is activity is like what uh, activity a person is doing on certain application let's say i'm logging into certain application outside of my office hours so how you can track my activity and uh, all those things will come into this configure activity settings and then email templates so identity iq is capable of sending emails on different actions let's say you request certain thing then an email goes then your manager approves then an email goes so those emails would be of different templates so you can um, create those and customize those email template according to your organization's needs and then data in encryption so this as i am comes into cybersecurity domain so encryption is very very important here uh, so we are going to talk about it into the data encryption session then we have uh, provisioning with identity iq so provisioning means writing to the target application and we are going to talk about it like how you can record your request how you can process your provisioning request how you will update your identity or user here we call it as identity cube and then we have a summary of workflows tasks and rules now since workflows is a vast topic we have uh, everything about workflows we are going to cover everything and in the interviews this is the mostly uh, asked questions and in the real implementations you would need to write lots and lots of workflows so we are going to talk about the workflow basics how you can uh, create workflows using your business process editor how you can do it using editing the xmls i will even share all the assignments related to all the topics with you which would give you a real time exposure and you can um, see it how you can uh, create workflows create rules an exercise for everything all right and then we have advanced workflow topics then we have forms so form is what so uh, let's say um, you wanted to customize the screen and create your own form so everything will come into this then and then we have risk scoring how risky this particular user is so let's say a manager can be more risky than a staff so those things those configurations we come into this and then we have partitioning and then we have tasks so we have a lot of tasks like a refresh task how you can schedule a task how you can um, uh, create your own task and everything about the task will come into this topic and then we have role management uh so as i told you it also supports role based access management and uh, we can uh, create uh, it roles business roles organizational roles entitlements roles there are so many types of roles available and this is also a very very important topic and almost in all the implementations you will have role management and uh, we have uh, define how we can define the policies how we can manage the work items and uh, all about console so console is a very important thing and when you are in uh, sales point developer you should uh, know in and out of console so how you can use the console so this is basically a utility given by sales point uh, for the developers like us and um, reports then um, you have groups and population user interface uh, then you have uh, group constructs like work groups populations and uh, work groups is basically uh, for a team let's say i am i am a part of an admin team so admin team can have 10 people and they will get a ticket whenever there is a manual request so an admin work group will be created and we will uh, know in depth about workflows also in the coming sessions and uh, then we have password management and uh, yeah that's it so this is a very vast course and this would give you a clear understanding of how sale point is designed and how you can implement this out of the box product and how you can customize it according to your organizational needs 
So this is all about the course content and assignments. And I, even I will be sharing you certain case studies, so which will give you an exposure to uh, the real time environments and uh, what you can do when certain cases arises. And then materials. I have a lot of PDFs. Uh, available for uh, sale point and I'll be uh, sharing um, certain PDFs with assignments with you and uh, whatever uh, presentations I give whatever I teach you in all the sessions so I will be sharing the PPTs and the videos and then interview questions discussion so when you go in when you take this course and uh, after that Definitely, you'll be sitting into certain interviews, and you should be able to crack interviews uh, for a two to three years of sale point experience developer. So, what all questions are asked in the interviews? And basically, all the questions asked are uh, scenario based. And I have uh, a list of sale point interview questions, and um, even you can ask me certain questions that that. Uh, is asked in your previous interviews or um, we will be discussing all the questions and the answers and I will be sharing a list of questions that you can prepare and crack and that will help you in cracking the interviews and then comes the certification guide so for say point certification uh, basically uh, there are certifications available on the site which are uh, like highly paid and uh, when you go for those certifications they give you a training and then you need to uh, then you get a certification and sale point is going to launch a sale point certified engineer exam so which is not launched yet but it is come it will come in uh, near future and i'll be sharing you uh, certain documents and uh, which will help you to crack those uh, to crack that certification and then a real time project and real time data so I will be sharing uh, one to two uh, projects uh, with you uh, and uh, those projects would be uh, uh, you can consider that as assignments and uh, that will give you an exposure of how, if you have if you would have implemented those uh, projects in real time how you would do that. So uh, that is it and um, thank you so much for attending